our, our meeting notes are for the second. I was I'm quickly trying to add the 16th. Yes, thank you. So um, which means I don't have currently an agenda. Let's make up an agenda. What do you guys want to talk about? We can go through kind of the, the usual suspects. Um, but if there's anything special you want to do, let's do it. I like this uh, aggregate sources of data metrics, OpenSSF.org discussion. Uh, that we just had in the last call. Or is this something else? Oh, maybe I missed that one. Just talking about the future of metrics at OpenSSF and oh, RLFX yeah. and RLFX. Ah, OK. Yep, let's it's in one of the that. future meeting uh, proposed agenda items. Oh, boy. Um, oh, we didn't get below the line for last time. Yes. So why don't we copy that? Because we already agreed at the very least that that was going to be part of our agenda. <laughs> Let's just copy that and yeah, that's perfect. <clears throat> we'll put that first and yeah. Actually, well, well, first is remembering to record. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and how do we, why don't we put as a bullet of new friends and while people put in their names, um, uh, Michael, I, I, if you don't mind, I, I'd propose that we uh, ask anybody who hasn't already spoke his first time to uh, to speak up and introduce. What do you think? Uh, that okay? So let's do it. So, do we have anybody new? Hey guys, I'm new. Uh, my name is Joseph. I'm, all, I'm working at Checkmarks. Um, we're developing uh, solutions to detect and and research supply chain security attacks. Um, and I also would like, if, if you don't have a defined agenda, to suggest a, an idea for a project I would like to uh, to initiate under the OpenSSF, and I'd like to hear your opinions. Um, in my background, I'm a software engineer. I'm now leading an engineering group and research group, um, and that's it. Awesome. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. And, and we absolutely uh, lo love ideas. So, um, you want to put that just before the other business? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. And then I'll just say project proposal, and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll we'll find out what it is when you say it. I'm here. For, I'm here for the feedback. Okay. And 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 to understand where where it, uh, it's belonging inside of uh, you know of the open SSF meetings. Okay. Great. Uh, quick hi from me. Um, I'm on just about every other call known to man for open SSF. Um, but this is my first time here, uh, because I usually have another call that uh, happens at this time, and it did not today. Ha ha ha. So. I get to see your lovely, happy, shining faces instead. Uh, my colleague, Eric Tice from Wipro, often uh, shows up to this one, um, but he's thankfully on vacation today. So uh, this worked out perfectly, my schedule and his, so I get to see you all and say hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'll say hi. Um, hi. I'm kind of not a new friend. I'm an old friend who went away for a little while, but then came <laughs> back. Um, my name is Jory Burse, and I'm a program director for the Linux Foundation. OpenSSF is one of my projects, my favorite project. Don't tell anyone. Um, and I'm here to support all the working groups and the community as we sort of grow and become what I think will be the best open source community on the internet. Um, so yeah, it's great to see your faces. Hi, Jory. Hello. Welcome, Jory. We are <laughs> glad to have you back. So, um, I can jump in very quickly. My name is Christine, and I am um, at F5. And uh, F5 recently joined the OpenSSF, so I'm just kind of like sitting in on some of the working groups and just basically trying to learn more. Perfect. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Uh, anybody else? Um, yeah. Um, so, Yotam, I 
uh, also participate in uh, a lot of the other working groups. For this one, I I'm usually don't get to attend as well. Uh, time zone, um, kids showers, uh, conflict. Uh, but uh, yeah, try to attend where when possible. Uh, from Resilient, a cybersecurity startup based in Israel, um, dealing with uh, vulnerability management and validation, etc. Perfect. Welcome. Uh, Hi, I'm uh, Yehuda from Checkmarks as well. I'm on the research team with uh, Joseph. And I've been here once before, but I haven't had the chance to introduce myself yet, so doing it now. Super. Wow, oh, lots welcome. of new and, and almost new folks. That's great. Yep. Yes. Uh, I just want to quickly also chime in. Uh, my name is Darcy Clark. I'm the engineering manager for the NPM CLI and the GitHub CLI teams at GitHub. Um, have been uh, trolling the uh, Open SSF working group repos recently and uh, want to start to get involved um, and potentially have folks from my team start to, to come to these meetings, uh, hopefully to help build great tools here. So, Terrific. All right. I think that was the, the, the longest new friends we've ever had. So that's that's awesome. Um, OK, so we, we definitely have a packed agenda, so let's get right into it. If you have anything else that you'd like to add, please add to the bottom of the agenda. And if we don't get to it today, we will get to it next time. Um, I like that that strategy. Um, David, Harvard Census. Yeah, so this is kind of a, a quick recap, but the Harvard Census 2 has been everybody's been waiting for it for a long time. It is finally out. So it, it basically uh, does analysis to find out which um, ecosystem, uh, well, uh, language level packages are very, very widely used. If you want details, see the report. Awesome. Do you know if the, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the answer is yes, but I should ask it. Uh, the critical projects working group, their list of most critical projects, is that being tailored based off the output of the census report? Or is that well, the plan at least? Well, uh, 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 that that is the plan. Uh, funny enough, you you've got a mirror right here, who, uh, the uh, the lead. Oh. So you 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 can you can yell at him. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but yes, Michael, that is correct. Yes, uh, we're going to use the census data as well as all the other available data and the uh, uh, qualitative data as well to uh, to to tailor a list. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Um, perfect. I've got a point on that, but I'll wait until the FLMAG update. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess next, uh, you know what? Uh, da, 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 let's. I feel like metrics might rat hole us. So I'm going to put that one down below because I want to make sure we get to insights and, and, and reviews, if that's okay. okay. Um, uh, Luigi, insights? OK, sorry. Um, yes, I have shared the uh, project uh, uh, in the channel of Open uh, SSF scorecard um, to understand uh, what are their opinion and idea about this. Uh, I have received uh, some comment and good feedback. So at the moment, I'm working on a thread model that I will add to the project uh, to define what are the risk uh, to, to use uh, a similar standard uh, slash uh, file uh, uh, for the scorecard, but also for other scanner. Um, then I will invite, uh, uh, I will contact uh, um, the responsible person in the scorecard channel that suggests me to organize a meeting uh, uh, with the project. Uh, I need to find the name because I don't remember now, but uh, uh, yes, with another project that is interested to, uh, to a similar implementation, uh, I can find it in one second. Uh, why is Lucky so slow? Uh, they uh, said me that uh, um, Emily said that the STAG STAG uh, meeting probably is a good uh, place to talk about this project. So 
for now the feedback are good. Uh, in addition, I have had uh, some uh, comment section uh, in the YAML files. So if you have uh, a threat model or a security assessment or a particular uh, CI tool or similar, SAS similar, you can add the comment in a human friendly way. So to give more context to people. So not just the URL, but also a short description slash uh, more information. Uh, I have had, uh, uh, of course it is short because I've decided to limit the number of characters. So 560, uh, like four tweets. And um, I've had also the expiration date in this way. Uh, if uh, the, the YAML file is not updated for more than one year, like security.txt, uh, the scanner can just decide to drop it without mm -hmm. considering it. Um, uh, this should force people to maintain it updated. Just a, a single review with a comment is a good uh, uh, update, but in this way, if there are uh, uh, unmaintained projects, we can understand this also from this file, especially if it became a standard. Um, and yes, at the moment, these are the main uh, updates that I have. I I will share it as soon as possible with the scorecard team again. I want just to finish to do the thread model that will be public. Uh, I am using the OWASP uh, Thread Dragon tool to do this. So probably it will be in JSON format, but you can uh, visualize it using the tool. And um, well, I am working I'm at the moment. Uh, I, I still, I am still working on the third model, but probably some feedback from other people are very welcome because it is quite easy to uh, miss important uh, uh, threats during uh, the model during the analysis. And that is. Perfect. I'm just trying to find a link to the um, uh, to the spec. Uh, I, so I have it probably uh, the YAML. Um, uh, I'm sure we have links to it further in the meeting notes, but just for folks that haven't seen it before. Oh, here. I have sent the link in the in the chat. At the moment, it's still on my personal GitHub, but uh, yep. um, after the thread model, probably we can decide to move it in the Open SSF uh, yep. organization. That works. Awesome. Thanks, Luigi. Any questions or anything for? Cool. Uh, next up, security reviews. Amir. Hello. Um, no uh, significant updates on the security reviews repo. Um, I did see somebody put here um, SCIT, S-C-I-T-T, -T, integration. Uh, I'm not too familiar with that personally, so um, um, I guess whoever put that up or if we want to talk about it, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, I, I can give a, give a quick update. So so have you heard of SKIM? Uh, if you've heard of SKIM, SKIT is the new word for SKIM because too many people have chosen SKIM for, for their projects. Um, okay. This is a, uh, it's intended to be a, uh, let's say assertion database, effectively, of uh, claims about a target. So the simplest would be um, a GitHub action has asserted that code scanning was enabled and ran when a artifact was produced. Or so. So in, in a way, it's it's uh, it's kind of. It may be part of the of a triad between like scorecards and security insights and like other and and maybe parts of and I don't say, I, I don't say it's part of S bomb because it's not it's it's a superset of of S bomb S bomb would be one such assertion David I know you're clamoring to say something <laughs> you're on mute. link there you go. <laughs> I, 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 me want, me want you or oh, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find a link. Uh, right now, it's, it's, it's very early. It's, um, uh, I, I think it's, it's not even a fleshed out, um, design. Um, but, but just conceptually, the idea would be, um, 
if somebody has done a security review of something like basically the metadata that that's part of a security review, make that programmatically consumable and make it so that you can express policy. So I will only use open source that has had a security review, but you know, expressed in in, in a skit assertion. Um, oh, so it's uh, very, very, very early days. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it certainly makes sense conceptually. Um, that was one thing I liked about the metrics um, database too, was having some way of, of having that assertion or displaying that data. So um, yeah, I think it's something worth exploring um, further. And if, if, if you slip the URL into the chat, I can slip it into the doc, or you can just yep. slip it into the doc. I'm gonna. Um, I'll throw who, it. Who, who's leading that? Is that yours, Michael, or no? So, so this was. So I'm not sure at the moment. So I believe K is is um is running this. I thought it was being absorbed into the uh, the work the the OpenSSF working group that had its name renamed. Uh, so I guess supply chain integrity. Um, so this okay. is the URL that I have for it, um, ah. but it's intended to be, you know, oh, to, to move to OpenSSF. Was... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I know, that's still not. We, we talked about it. It didn't. Yeah, I, have no uh, idea I don't where think it's it's, it's not an OpenSSF, but I don't think anybody. And I don't know that anybody really opposed. It was just yeah. kind of a an idea and that didn't really go very far. I, I think the, the question was trying to coordinate this and salsa. Um, sure. But. Uh, yep. um, yeah, per perhaps this is a few months too soon to talk about this, so we can, you know, as this becomes more more real, if it does, then we'll in chat. Yeah. OK, awesome. Cool. Definitely worth looking into. Yeah, I'll take. A yeah. Look. Awesome. Uh, okay, future of metrics Um uh, Is there is there any anybody here that from scorecards? Because I think that was the main. Um, so so there's a conversation we had, um, you know, back, and I, I think we've come to an agreement that like the implementation of metrics.opensf.org, the you know the, the the database and the the importer that doesn't import very well, uh, and the um, uh, the the dashboard uh, Grafana dashboard um, is probably not the right long term implementation of it, but that there is value of an aggregated collector and provider of metrics. We talked about depths.dev. We talked about the upcoming scorecards.dev or security scorecards.dev um, as a potential, uh, potentially using that to aggregate. We also talked about uh, LFX security building out that aggregation platform. Um, I don't have a strong feeling anywhere on on which, uh, on, on where the implementation should live. I think it's a simple enough, like, you know, at, at least at a, at a high level, like, you know, you have you have metrics provided by different sources. Consumers want to want a view into that in aggregate to get better information, and you know, and then API access into that aggreg aggregation so that they can build tools and things on on top of that. As an example, you know, the npm client it would be super useful for the npm client when you install a package the same way that you have like this package is deprecated to also have you know. Uh, some, I don't, I don't know what, but some, you know, uh, this package is unmaintained based off of a signal that scorecards generated. Um, so I think that there's lots of stuff that we could do there. Um, that's, that's my high level view of where we're at here. Do others have thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, I mean, it was always view, viewed as uh, you know, experiment. Let's get going. And frankly, I think uh, you know, from the view of an experiment, I think metricsopensf.org has absolutely shown that there's value in the aggregation. 
So I don't, I personally think that that was obvious, but, I, but seeing it is, uh, mm -hmm. I think is, is very helpful for the argument. Um, yeah, I, th I think the main issue for LFX is security. And of course, you know, from the LF side, you know, that, uh, you know, there, there's good value. I think the, tr the, um, uh, when we talked with Shubra and tell me, uh, Mike, if, uh, if I'm misunderstanding, but I think mm -hmm. originally they were thinking about always doing the deep dive and obviously can't do that with every single open source project. But I think Shubra basically agreed that, yeah, they could just, you know, bring in data like scorecards data without necessarily doing a deep dive in every single project, which suddenly makes the uh, OPEX uh, doable. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he, and, and, he's and, worried about running tools on every single program in the universe. And okay. right. right. Um, yeah. And 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 that's so. So I would um, totally happy for Schubert to, to build that LFX to include that stuff. I didn't in the conversations I've had. I haven't heard any. You know, no, this is my territory. Like, don't go here. I think everybody was like, we just want something, and we don't like. I don't think anybody really cares where it is. Um, yeah. I hope I'm not misrepresenting that, but that, that was what I took out of it. Um, but I think the important thing is that somebody does it, so we can't have everybody waiting for somebody else to do something. Right. Um, I would like to get metrics at openSF.org shut down, like, you know, I don't have any particular timeline, and, you know, it's, it's not. But can, can I request, soon. don't shut it down until there's a viable alternative. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, right. And, and, I just want a viable alternative. Yeah. Right. In, in fact, if there's some, if there's problems getting the scorecards data into metricsopensf.org, and there's a way we can uh, fix it without too much trouble, I would say let's do it so mm -hmm. that there's something. We have something that shows the value of aggregation, makes it clear that it's doable, and then we move on once we have a that that next step running. Yep. Mir. Ah, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'm just curious because I was looking a little bit at the, the LFX platform and there is a, a section on it regarding insights, which does sound kind of like what we're talking about in terms of comparing open source projects, gaining insights into projects. Um, wait, wait, where, where are you talking about? The insights, LFX insights. Yeah. So I wonder if I mean, if there's enough overlap there, if, if if that makes sense as kind of like the de facto kind of metric, new home for metrics. But, um, and I believe the insights tool is, is, is accessible, meaning, you know, anyone can go use it. Um, so that, I mean, that, seem, that seems to make sense. I mean, in terms of overlap and, um, you know, consistencies with what the goal is of metrics and what the goal of, of this insights platform is um so yeah that, that's just something I, I happen to come across yeah i, I, I think, think the key um, is it, it's not doing it it's not aggregating all that data that we've been uh working with yet yeah. uh, I, I don't think it's quite clear it could it just isn't yeah. currently Got it. <laughs> that's why I want, I want to push back on shutting it down and tell the replacement oh stuff. definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Cool. So I, I, oh, sorry, yeah. There we go. Um, so uh, yes, plus one to not shutting anything down until there's an alternative. Yay. And when there is an alternative, you know, redirect metrics to that alternative. But uh, as we're talking about LFX, I think a limitation might be the fact that it currently only covers Linux Foundation projects, right? Um, uh, and I I don't think that's true, but it is opt in. So you, as the owner of a project, you need to do a thing in order to get your thing into LFX. Uh, no, uh, LFIT has to do a thing, and oh. uh, and I believe it's only uh, Linux Foundation projects. And does it, metrics? It, is it does cover some more than Linux Foundation projects, Vicky. But but your 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 point is still taken. In historically, it's been focused only on Linux uh, LF projects, and that's that's the issue that we need to, um, you know, originally when it was developed, the theory was, hey, we're gonna work on these for LF projects, and what is in discussion is, hey, um, why don't we provide some of these mechanisms for just arbitrary open source projects, 
and that requires them to, to change what they're doing in order to do that. Um, uh, that said, it, it makes a whole lot more sense to build up something once that has, you know, all these different tools and, and information and all at your fingertips and somebody's actually paid to work on the UI and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, but that, but that that's but makes... that's the thing we got we actually have to get an a, a, an agreement they're going to do this they're going to do that before uh, shutting anything down. Yeah, absolutely. I I do think there's again as as has been mentioned a few times there's lots of value in aggregation, right? Uh, it's a great tool certainly should exist somewhere. Um, but I am concerned about uh, having it all under the Linux Foundation umbrella when so much of the open source world is not under the Linux Foundation. Sure. And so um, it's not that I distrust the Linux Foundation to do it. It's just that we have to make sure that everyone else is on board with that, right? You know, and getting Apache and Eclipse and everyone under Software Freedom, Freedom Conservancy and FSF and all these other projects, right, under uh, to play along. Um, and so I think that's something we need to consider as we're having these conversations. Mm -hmm. I, I think well, thumbs up. I think there, there's also a fundamental difference between the opt-in model where LFX needs some sort of permission, something into a repo versus the current model where scorecards doesn't need permission to scan a repo. Metrics.openSF.org doesn't need permission for anything. Um, so if LFX goes that route, then it, it simplifies things because it allows them to scale to everything. It may limit the visibility of what they can get, but you know, as a trade-off, like, so I agree completely. It should be an intentional decision that we make on on where it goes, and and LFX would need to buy in um, to that. The conversations I've had made it seem like they're amenable to that, um, yeah. but we should continue to have that conversation. It looks like Ava put their hand up. So, thank you. Um, I, I want to strongly second Vicky's concern um, and add to that, uh, and this is something I've already raised with Brian, uh, and I forget the the name of the the lead PM for LFX. I have some significant privacy concerns uh, with the LFX platform as it is currently being designed. Uh, it, uh, the way that projects, any project, LF Foundation or otherwise, um, opts in, the way data is gathered and then in the background by LFX cross-referenced between repos uh, has should we say, interactions with certain privacy laws in different countries, not to mention uh, some community members might find it an invasion of their own personal privacy, even if it isn't illegal. Um, so you mean things like correlating, like I've committed to this project and this project and this project? Uh, I'd rather not go into details. Okay, that's fine. I, happy to follow up privately. I don't want to get in a big discussion here about privacy law in Europe and California yeah. and so on. Um, but I have I have some concerns there. I, I hope the platform continues to evolve to meet them. Uh, I, I will make sure that you're involved in those conversations in that next set of conversations. So thank you. We get everything out. Uh, but not. Yeah, thanks. So from my understanding, in the last meeting, right, like a LF security currently can't scale up to the all the open source projects and packages, right? Like a, so that's why I was proposing devstore which is already having these features and I believe in the last call someone from Google mentioned that you know they would be interested to consider donating depth dev to open SSF right I'm not I don't really want to talk on behalf of Google I don't know if anyone from Google who can comment on that but currently depth dev contain the scorecard data and it's contained a lot of other useful data from a security perspective right like a, so in a large scale I think they, they have a really huge amount of data. And it's a sort yeah, it's really good so far from a user experience perspective. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, which system are you referring to? Depths.dev. Ah, depths.dev, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I I agree. So it, it it could also work great under depths.dev. Hmm. Or or the scorecard dev, the, the upcoming uh, scorecard dev site. Okay, um, so I guess so. So for next step here, uh, I, I will I will take an action of setting up something again with um, reaching out to, to folks that we that we talked to last time um, from Google and Scorecards and 
see if we want to move forward on a um you know a, you get a high level plan together and then run it by everybody and see what everybody thinks so. um okay next uh, alpha omega update so we had a webinar about a month ago um uh hope most of you were able to attend um actually i think there were like you know, about 400 people on the, on the the call if i maybe 300 it, it was it was more than i expected so i was happy about that uh we got job postings out uh that went out earlier this week so it's a lead pm a software slash security engineer and a uh security analyst researcher um all three roles are full-time Linux Foundation employees uh, who will be uh, effectively, well, the lead PM is going to be essentially the uh, full-time driver of Alpha Omega. Um, so the other two would almost certainly report to that to that lead PM. Uh, and then the, the current folks, uh, Michael Windsor, myself, and, and, and Brian, uh, would be, would move to more of an oversight um, oversight role in strategic stuff, things like that. So if you know anybody, please send them either my way or Michael Windsor's way or send right to the job posting. Happy to answer questions, talk about that. Um, these are what we're looking for here are pretty senior, highly technical, like, you know, um, I don't want to say, I'm trying to use, you, you, you use the right word, but um, we're, we're, we're going to be looking hard for the right fit for this. Um, and, and we know it'll be, it'll, it, it might be difficult to find. But we're gonna yeah, try. Quick, quick note, just having dealt with some of the legal issues on hiring in the past, I would suggest, you know, by all means, talk to the Michaels and anybody else, but, you know, for the actual, hey, I'm interested in the job, uh, oh, go yeah. click on the, on the job list, job posting and go through that. Yep. that formal process so that we know you know everybody's considered and all that good stuff absolutely we want we want to make sure that uh <laughs> no nobody cries foul later the, the goal is to get progress forward yep um cool um alpha omega is also going to be starting a monthly public meeting um and i think that that, that starts the formal detachment of of alpha omega from this working group uh so our first will be on the sixth um, so it'll actually be, I think, I think it's Wednesdays, um, a couple hours after this, after this meeting. So, well, you know, every, everybody's welcome to, welcome to join and, and, um, and be part of the process. Um, that's what I got for Alpha Omega. Um, any questions or anything there? Did I capture what you said accurately yes. enough in the yep. notes? And it's on the the uh, open SSF calendar. Uh, okay, uh, Joseph, floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, so, I'll share my screen. Yeah. So I'll pitch you the concept. I'm looking for feedback. Um, and I, I truly believe in this uh, in this project as a tool for developers. I think we build great tools, but we need to to integrate in in the organic flow of, of you know problem solving uh, of software engineers. So imagine a software engineer like bumping to a, a situation where he jumps into Google, trying to find a snippet how to parse a date string. You know something most of us do not this specific problem, but it happens from time to time. <laughs> uh, so you bump into uh, your first result, you land into Stack Overflow, and we can talk about the protocol of how to choose the right answer from Stack Overflow, you know, based on comments and, and the, the, the age. And, but um, we have a lot of data here donated by uh, a lot of people, a lot of smart people maintained by the community. Uh, and eventually uh, this uh, exploration process uh, is ended up in, okay, I'll, I'll take this suggested package and I'll try it out on, on my computer and um, and I'll install it and see what I get and, and I'll play around with it. Uh, and the problem is we expect the developers like to use a great tools we build, uh, for instance, devs.dev, which has a lot of insightful information. Um, maybe my organization's policy would, you know, uh, 
forbid me for using this package. Uh, I don't know, not maintained or, or licensed or whatever reason. Um, and we have a lot of great tools such as, as Open Source Insights. Um, and what I think the, the most of developers are not doing is jumping into these tools. And uh, I think uh, a simple browser extension, um, just you know, uh, or highlighting uh, snippets over websites like Stack Overflow or maybe npm or, or other package managers uh, with like a summary of data already being calculated and easily, in my opinion, can be accessed via API, all done within the browser. Um, not saying that this is the right UX, but uh, like the concept is creating an overlay layer of, of information, uh, not only for security, but also for the health and maintenance of the package. Um, if someone would like to see the full information, full reports, maybe we can integrate more like advisor uh, websites like OpenBase or, or Sneak Advisor or other great more. Um, you know, it's open source. This is, this is the idea. Um, uh, and, and that's it. That's, that's, that's the, 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 the tool I would like to suggest uh, uh, to be hosted and, and be part of OpenSSF. Um, I'd like to hear what you think. So, so help me understand this. So for example, if you look at Stack Overflow and it says something like do a pip install blah, or hey, I've got a link to this package, it, there would be some way to indicate, oh, you're looking, you're, seems like you're looking about it for information about this package, here's some more data. And and I imagine you would also do this, I'm trying to think of the, the websites you would try to trigger on. So things like looking at Stack Overflow, looking at various repo sites, maybe noticing certain URLs that yeah. link to a package. Is, is that kind of what you had in mind? Yeah, like scraping. Uh, in, in specific websites developers tend to use when they explore and research uh, for uh, packages. Uh, and whenever you have uh, a suggestion or, or a specific page of a package, add more insights, or in this case, in Stack Overflow, add more information about, you know, you get an answer suggesting you to install a specific package. Um, we can take some insightful information for let's say odeps.dev and place it there. So, you know, the developer will have um, uh, this information inside of his organic process. All he has to do, which I'm not saying this is easy, but to install this open source browser extension once, uh, uh, and this data will be available for him whenever he goes. Uh, it can be on, on, on more websites, not, not particularly Stack Overflow, but uh, the, the browser logic should be simple to scrape, like to, ins to understand whether, okay, this is a package reference. I'll try to like do a, a second hop in the background for, for an, uh, some API, fetch the summary of the information. And if the user would like to, you know, to show the extra information to, to show it there, maybe colorize gently, uh, should, should be like develop more, but, but that's the concept. I really like this idea. Um, I mean, I, I'm 80% uh, of me loves it. The other 20% says, yeah, but you'll never get enough people to install the browser extension to make it be like broadly useful and just get it in, you know, talk to Stack Overflow and NPM and NuGet and all those to get it embedded in the site. But I also know that that's, that, that, that's gonna be really hard to do, particularly if there's not like, obvious demand for it. So maybe the browser extension is the way to test that demand and hone it. And then when it's so obvious that it provides value that they would say, yeah, we'll just, you know, iframe it or embed it or whatever. Um, I think it as a way to experiment, I think it's 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 great. Um, I would even go so far as to say the um, like uh, osv.dev, like include the vulnerabilities and or, or you know, um, to more than just scorecard, but um. Yeah, I, it, it, and I think I, I think you've hit the nail on the head here. Um, you know, how do we encourage develop? You know, if, if we did this, because I, I think there's there's a there there in, in this I, in this example. It, it is absolutely true that uh, the easier we make it for people to see important information, the more likely they'll actually use it. 
Um, what can we do to either encourage people to install Sun Extreme Extension if we did this or remove barriers? And I will say the latter one, the barriers. Um, I know a number of organizations don't like installing browsers extensions because they can they can do bad things. So things we can do to reduce the worry about that might help a little bit. But you know, if there are things we can do positively, I think we ought to talk about that because if we can overcome those enough that it's worth doing. But the trick is we got to get somebody to install the extension. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think when, when it's open source and when it's maintained publicly, you know, um, uh, the, the concern of, you know, you have great extensions, Adblock uh, or Grammarly or, you know, extensions where uh, almost everyone uses. Um, so, so you have those extensions uh, and you have like, extensions that you have less reputation uh, and I agree it's it's scary to to install but that, while it's open source uh, I think the I think you can uh, go, go for it easily and and yes it's it's hard to to cause and, and to sell it to developers but the, the the thing is when you know when when I see also developers on, on my engineering group and and they're aware of, of the security issues but their mindset and and I think a lot of friends of mine is you know, there is some certain flow of of, uh, of experience when you search for problems and you experience some code snippets and you try them out and sometimes forget to to check on these uh, uh, on these resources. And right. this is here to to make it easy for you in, in the organic process in the so, so that's. Yeah, uh, to, to be honest with you, the, the problem you don't need to sell very hard. I'm, I, I already buy it. Uh, the, the, the issue is whether or not this is this is a uh, this is worth uh, tr trying out, um, and I think that really comes down to the what can we do to get people to install it. Um, I mean, branding can, I think can help. Um, you know, you, you, we, we can label it OpenSSF yes. or LF or something like that. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, perhaps I I missed this. I had to to multitask for a moment. Um, which browsers or browser does this target? Um, is it purely Chrome, for instance, because Edge is quite popular. We have Firefox. Some of us are Safari only. Um, and then, of course, you have those outliers who are, you know, pushing rocks uphill on Linux. Bless their hearts. I love them for it. Um, so what are we talking about here? Because uh, I agree that um, as a proof of concept, at the very least, finding a way to get people to, using a browser plugin to uh, test whether this will help raise awareness um, and uh, therefore reduce the number of kind of potential screw ups that we get just for people don't know to look right. Um, so fixing that, I think, is a great idea. I'm, I'm with David here. You don't have to convince me that this is generally a good idea um, and a Browser, you know, browser plugin, yay, go team. But, you know, uh, are we just thinking one browser? Because I think that's going to be quite limiting. No, um, all of them. I mean, most of the popular, uh, not the, the very niche, but uh, the Firefox, uh, Chrome based, um, and Safari, and all of the popular. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem because. Most of most of the uh, structure of, of browser extensions are very similar. Uh, like speaking of, of Firefox and Chrome, um, almost the same uh, uh, manifest. Um, and and yeah. And the, if I recall correctly, uh, Firefox yeah. can take a lot of the extensions that Chrome can do. In fact, Firefox can do things that Firefox that Chrome won't anymore. Uh, so and, and that, the Chrome-based ones includes Edge. I don't know how different Safari is. If I recall, Safari is a little more different. It is um, considerably <clears throat> more different. But I think if this uh, proof of concept works out pretty well, um, then working with the browser community to get this added to the dev tools, frankly, for each and every one of the browsers, that's just going to boost the uh, boost the availability of it. I'll, uh, considerably, I think that would be great, and that's something that I think the browser teams might be uh, pretty on board with because they've all got dev tools, right? And right. Well, it, being able to surface this information could be really super useful. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to add that, you know, plugin for dev tools, you know, things like the editor, you know, Visual Studio, Vim, and so on. Then you've got, of course, the, uh, the, the package managers themselves, which is, yep. al although by the, by that time, you've probably already made your decision. So that may be too late. It, it, it's also, it lets us experiment, but lots of hands are up. So whoever's next. Matt, you're on mute. Oh, that's good. Yeah, sorry. I, I want to oh, sorry. <laughs> wanna build on the, the wording, the, the terminology proof of concept. So I'm, I'm wondering um, what level of endorsement you're looking for and what, what the expectations are. And I'm still wondering, I thought there was an evolving discussion around what the term incubating would mean or something similar. Because there's there seems to be like a criteria for entry to be labeled something. I don't know if proof of concept is an official thing. Please help me tack members here. But um, but I'm, I'm just saying anybody can write code. Any, I mean, I'm all for any you know, 100 proof of concepts. The question is, what are we, we know what? Why are we even being asked for approval? You just write the code and and uh, go for it. I mean, we're, we're either the tool is useful or not or provide. I mean, all uh, increases access information and people love it. And we say let me take it to incubating or whatever. But I'm just wondering what classification, what we're what, what kind of approval we're looking for here. <laughs> Uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, not not no approval. I'm looking for feedback, and uh, I'd like to do it as part of uh, you know uh, of the brand of OpenSSF. Uh, well, that's I, the same thing. If it's it's a branded thing, then that is <laughs> yeah. Just some type I'm of willing to allocate resources it and embracing it in some way. What does he mean? So that I don't know if that level exists. So. Well, we we have uh, we have in the past labeled these sorts of things as incubating, um, but uh, yeah, I was asking. I thought the criteria was being developed for incubating, so I was wondering what what the status right. of that was. Uh, I don't know um, as far as far as that statement, uh, Jory. Do you? Jory, you're on mute. Still on mute. No, okay. So I unmuted my big fancy microphone, but not the tool. That's cool. Um, so uh, my understanding is that incubation process is really going to apply to like new working groups, new bigger projects that the OpenSSF wants to um, kind of like incubate to to bring them to potentially bring it under the umbrella. Um, the working groups still have the autonomy to to kind of decide to take on different initiative, different code projects, different um, things of that sort under their uh, their purview. But it would be, I think, uh, a, a TAC decision or you know a consultation with the TAC if this project wanted to become something more than um, sort of an initiative under the, the working group umbrella. That is my understanding of the direction that we're moving in. Um, seeing Ava nod their head, so that's uh, a great uh, reinforcement there. So, so by all means, uh, Joseph, I think this means you can, no, proceed. Yeah, I will add a little color to that. Um, the definitions of all those things are in flight. Um, I think Jory's summary was fairly accurate. I think there, um, for project code coming in, it may have slightly different criteria than working groups, uh, and for. And apologies for kind of multitasking and missing a comment. Uh, perhaps if the proposal here is to run another public facing service uh, website, something like that, um, there may be separate criteria that get developed to judge the, the maturity level or, or project or uh, progression policy for a public facing service as it might have different obligations than merely saying we're hosting some code. And so any um, endorsement of it or description of its maturity level what SLA it has, like an SLA doesn't apply to a working group or, or project code, but it does apply to a service. So we need to work out those sort of, of finer points. Yep. Uh, not. Yeah, I just want to add, I think the browser extension can be a bit complicated and challenging for some enterprises like my employer, right? Like I just want to uh, give an opinion, but I also like the idea of, uh, you know, core browser feature or like a developer extension, right? So we don't need to add some third party software additionally if the uh, browser itself is supporting that. But I also think, you know, in the previous call I mentioned, 
it's also good for a GitHub or a whatever the source code hosting place to highlight this information, right? Like a enterprise like us, we, we also block a Maven Central or NPM because we don't want people to directly go there and download it. We have our own internal artifactories and everything, right? So but I think it is good to have this information in the uh, GitHub or GitLab, those places as well. Yeah. So Joseph, I, I think what might be a good next step um, is to talk with the scorecards folks and maybe the security tooling working group to kind of ha have a similar similar conversations to see kind of what their appetite is and, and what their plans are. You know, um, how can we help? I guess is really the, awesome. yeah. you know. Um, I mean, if, if the goal is, hey, let's start a project within this working group and you know, we can write some code and let some people create something, I think we can do that. Uh, unless somebody tells me differently. Um, I think that, you know, creating some first step code is one thing saying, hey, this is a um, here's an extension. We endorse it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so on is, is a different step. So I, I think that that would be but you wouldn't. There's no point in doing that until there's code worth running. <laughs> and and I would I would I'm fairly certain that the bump to get from Here's here's an experiment that we feel good about, and we'd like to make this public and put the OpenSSF name on it. Is more is going to be a lot of pro forma stuff, like what are you actually promising, and like like that that's not going to stop the project. So right, right. You know, so. I, I I do think that um, uh, I you know, I also used to work at an organization where oh wait you want to install an extension uh, is is of of great concern. Um, if we write if the code is written in such a way that's relatively small and easy to audit, that would help. You know, so basically it's a relatively simple set of patterns. Boom. And here's what happens when the pattern matches. You know, if we if we start small. Also, um, those organizations wanted people to, at least my organization wanted people to review. Wait a minute, you're bringing in code. Why? Tell me more. And so here's an extension to try to support you evaluating the code coming in your door. Might be an easier sell than many other extensions. Maybe. So, so I think I'll, I'll try, uh, uh, as Michael suggested, suggested uh, pitching into scorecards, working group, and um, and. I'll I'll not wait. I'll I'll start working on you know on some coding and, and proof of concept, um, and I'll have live demos to to show awesome. as as the progress. If, uh, if you quick, want any help, throw something out on Slack and and yeah, solicit I'll, help I'll, from the from the from the larger community. Yeah, quick quick note like, on. Sorry. I'm sorry. Quick note on licensing. Um, Apache 2.0 and my, MIT is pre-approved. Anything else? You need to talk to the TAC first. Actually, the governing board, but through the TAC. My two favorite licenses. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, Matt, your hands up. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to also understand going forward, you know, what's, you know, again, all the concerns of the browser plugins being approved within companies and things, whatnot. Um, I don't use browser extensions at all for those type of things. So if I'm told to use a package from a, uh, from a source like Stack Overflow or whatever, I go directly to the package and look at the package myself. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out positioning wise, considering the fact if we're wildly successful here at OpenSSF, and if you know our scorecard stuff uh, and the data we accumulate has an effect on package managers, and really we're just looking at the package manager, pointing to them and providing an overlay. My my hope is that over time that our information becomes first order from metadata on on those package managers. So the question is. How does that? How does this plugin or proposal fit into that future? And is you know where's that? What's the unique? What's what you know? Isolating the unique value add of it if that feature is indeed realized. Just so I'll let you go first. This is your thing. <laughs> but well, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I, as you can say, uh, if this gets integrated into all the package managers, then we don't need the browser extension and. Uh, if the browser extension's existence helps accelerate that or make that happen, then 
everybody wins and and, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Apply, applying competitor pressure always is 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 yeah. a you know, goal. Yeah. I, let me quickly add that I suspect all is hard. Um, I think most, I think uh, when we start talking to about, you know, about particular package managers, there are some package managers that are more widely used than others. Um, you know, uh, uh, JavaScript and uh, Python are widely used. Common list, Pascal, not so much. So I could easily see situations where we have really put some resources into some but this may help catch some others. So, so, so the nice thing is we have folks like Darcy here. So from an NPM perspective, like, and I don't know how uh -oh. NPM back. Ah. Uh, no, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not even asking for like, you'll, 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 you'll hear my ask later. Um, no, the, um, I guess the question is what, oh, as a package manager, what criteria would you be looking for when trying to make the decision of should I add this new feature to like the NPM website? And is that because understanding that criteria may help the project go down a direction that either gets closer to that or intentionally doesn't. Um, and I don't want to put you on the spot because we have 30 seconds left in the meeting, but maybe next time we'll talk about that. Yeah, I don't have. Uh... What's the best political statement I can make right now? Um, I don't have any specific uh, context around what we we would or wouldn't include in the website. Um, there is historical um, work done to consider um, like publicly consumable widgets even um, that could have allowed for community driven insights or, or sort of plugins or usage even um, to be generated by the community and and, and consumed and, and showcased on package pages. Um, so that was at least something that w was potentially an avenue we were exploring um, historically. Um, but yeah, the, in terms of the trust model of the information and the type of heuristics and things we're looking for and insights we want to bubble up for, for packages and, and their integrity and, and security, um, we're constantly evolving our, our posture on that and, and what we're going to be offering as a platform ourselves, um, but are also obviously here on, in, in these working groups, like trying to figure out what the best practice is from the security uh, community and um, that's why we're here and I'm interested as well. Um, the NPM CLI tool obviously uh, get, can be configured with any third party registry. So what's the, what's the, um, you know, what can we do uh, in the open source that actually is available to all, all folks that might, might be consumable or used by the NPM CLI. So um, we have a whole RFC process and, and like a very open product uh, development um, uh, cycle, so it, it's nothing's off the table in terms of adding new features to to the NPM CLI. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, we're out of time. Thank you all very much for the great conversation today. Um, I hope to see everybody again in two weeks, and 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 maybe more folks. So, um, thank you all. Stay safe. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.